Praise the Lord. Impact designed to stand out. I welcome everyone today in Jesus' name. You know, as a teacher, we normally, before a lesson, write out what we're going to teach, how we're going to teach, and what we intend to get after the teaching. My purpose, my intention, and the design for today is to take you out of where you are, lift you up, and give you the strength to stay up there. Yeah. I will rise. I am ready to rise. Then I will lift you by the grace of God. Yeah. And the power of the Lord that raises you up will make you stay there. In the future, if Jesus tarries, when I come around, I'll not see you where you are now. I'll see you up there. Up there. Where are you? Up. As high, no matter how high you are now. Higher. 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 In Jesus' name. Father, we well, thank you at this time. We well, bless your name. You are great. You are gracious. You are loving. You are merciful. You are forgiving. Lord, I pray you lift everyone up in Jesus' name. Young, older, adults, Lord, I pray your hand will be upon everyone. And your spirit will transform every life and will get to the place you want us to get to in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. God has blessed you. You can sit down. As we come today, the great words... The important word, the penetrating word, is stand out. Stand out. That's what we want to talk about today. To stand out. Number one is to stand up. You have to stand up from where you are. You need to look around. Why have I been at this level, a good level? A profitable level, a desirable level. All this time, because when I got to that level, I stayed there. Now, stand up. Stand right. You know, if you are standing, the way you stand, maybe you are standing as if you are going to trip, as if you are going to fall, as if you are not sure of what you are standing for and where you are standing. Stand right. Stand for. You know, in life, there are many things that will beckon you, that will say, come here, come here, come here. But you make a choice. And you say, now, tomorrow, henceforth, I've chosen something that I am standing for. Because if you don't stand for something, Every idea, every opinion, every cajoling will get you down. But you say, I stand out, I stand right, I stand for, I stand against. You see, there are things, if you don't stand against something negative, you're not going to stand for something positive. But you look at life. And you look at the presentations before you and you say with all your heart and you say with all your mind and you say with all the disposition you have in your life, I stand 
against that before you can stand out you have to be firm you have to be very good at saying there are things i stand for there are things i stand against if you don't have that heart if you don't have that stomach to stand against what is wrong you will not be able to stand for what is right you stand first you see there are people they're waiting for others when they stand you are follow follow person then i can stand when they stand it means they approve of this if they don't approve of that if they come from that direction that direction and they are standing towards that you don't want to take the first line the first opportunity but you are the one that says i stand first before the other stand while they're still thinking while they see ruminating should i should i not you made up your mind you're not an indecisive person a person that is crippled by indecision i stand first you stand firm you're firm after you are standing and other people challenge you and other people say why are you, you are the lone ranger you're standing alone and we don't agree with you you have to be firm you have chosen the way you have chosen the path you have chosen your destination your destiny and you say i stand firm i stand fast you stand forever it, it is not you know something that says uh, 10 years ago i was standing but uh trodden the rough way i've climbed the steepest mountain i've gone through storm and the waves of the sea therefore uh, maybe i need to i'm getting tired no you stand forever those are the people i'm talking to today the people that have the help of heaven the people that have the state of mind that say i stand out i stand up i stand straight i stand against i stand first i stand firm and come and meet me any other time until i close my eyes from there i stand forever and then when you get to heaven you'll be standing forever with angels in heaven yeah. are you ready yeah. i'm talking to you today on the decision and determination to stand out i'm actually using for my three points three people number one i'm using joseph number two i'm using ruth number three i'm using daniel those are people in their own time in their own generation adverse winds blew but the stood and stormy waves came in their lives but he stood and the environment around them it, it wasn't a conducive environment to stand and yet they stood one joseph two ruth three daniel and if they did it by the help of god you can do it a good good amen yeah. if, they, if they did it with partnership with the god of heaven you will do it in our own time i wish there were another joseph yet no joseph is not here you are the one that replaces joseph i wish ruth were here but ruth is not here you my daughter there you are standing in the place where ruth stood and you will stand i wish daniel were here again to show us and point the way to stand out to stand up 
to stand straight, to stand against, to stand firm, to stand false, and to stand forever. But Daniel is not here. You are the man, you are the woman, and you come to stand in the place where they stood. You will stand. And you are ready to stand. And the grace and the strength and the power, the spiritual energy that it takes for you to stand out, the Lord granted to everyone. Look at Genesis chapter 41, verse 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a man, such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? Not that the Spirit of God was in the past when he had a dream, an, an energizing dream, an inspiring dream. And that time, he had the Spirit of God. But now, after much water has gone under the bridge, after discouragements had come, after setbacks had come, no more having the Spirit of God, always the Spirit of God was there. Can we find such a one as this? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. Look at um, Ruth chapter 3. Reading from verse 10, it tells us about truth. This is a lady now, I told you about a young man, Joseph. Now we have a young lady too, and he said, Blessed be thou of the Lord. Thou be blessed because you are the Lord. My daughter, it says, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter and thou. It says, you've shown this, the latter end, than at the beginning. It says, inasmuch as thou followed not, followed not, whether young men or any other poor or rich, that's a lady. She stood out. She had a colleague, a partner that enjoyed the same privileges that one could not stand. This is a lady that said others may go the way they want. Others may act the way they want. But I stand out. I stand up, I stand straight, I stand against the idols of my land. I stand firm, I stand fast, I stand forever. You see, all of us have done it. We can do it. We will do it. By the help of the Lord, by the grace of the Lord, we stand. You will stand. I will stand. You know, it starts from your heart. That's why it says the decision and the determination to stand out. Three things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at the purposeful decision to stand well, conviction. If a person does not have conviction, this is right, that is wrong, what's he going to stand for? If a person does not have conviction, this is positive, this is negative, how does he have the power to stand? How does he know the direction to look? If a person does not know this is acceptable to God, this is unacceptable to God, how does he have the conviction, the conviction to stand and to know what he's standing for? You must have conviction. And then it's the conviction that produces decision and you have the purposeful decision to stand 
with conviction. Number two. Number two is the persevering devotion to stand afar. Stand afar. Stand far from corruption. You might have been living in a spiritual enclave under your parents, under your mentors, under the people that were watching over you. But now you come out of that enclave. You come out of those people that have the authority and the supervision over you. And now you're in a place where everything is corrupt. It might be a school. It might be a college. It might be in another country. It might be in a strange land. And you get there, but you carried your conviction of point number one with you. And you come here now, and there is corruption there. You know, a person can uh, be first class in mathematics and have corruption. A person might be first class, is standing out in engineering but he lives in a corrupt society and he does not know although he stood out in uh, academics now in the midst of corruption he cannot stand and so we're not here uh, the impact you think by producing people who stand out in academics only and when it comes to spirituality they know nothing about salvation to stand for they know nothing about the character of a saved sanctified soul that will stand and they will not fall for the corruption in society. We're talking about persevering devotion to, to stand afar from corruption. Number three, we're talking about the perpetual dominion. He is always on top. On top of the situation. Problem is on top. He has dominion. Challenges. He has dominion as a champion because this is not a cake that is well cooked on one side and is rotting on the other side. There are many people in life, sorry to tell you what you know now, that they are overdone in one on one side and they are uncooked they are rotting, they are raw, and they are not edible. They are not profitable. On the other side, the bookworm who reads and reads and reads, but although he conquers that little narrow subject, he has not conquered in his spirit. He has not conquered in his character. He has not conquered against temptation, Against the temptress, against the tempter. He knows one area, he has one area of knowledge, but he does not have that perpetual dominion that he needs. But we need that perpetual dominion for standing fast with courage. You'll have that courage. You'll stand in that courage. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at purposeful decision to stand with conviction. Purposeful decision that stands with conviction. Look at Genesis chapter 37. I'm reading from verse 6. And said unto them here i pray thee i plead with you this dream which i have dreamed stop there the dream which i have dreamed now we need to understand the dream the dream there are some dreams we have in the night the dream there's some dreams we have that projects our mind. What I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about what I will be in the future. I'm still young. I'm thinking about the ladder I will climb. 
I'm thinking about the place, the peak of the mountain I will get to. And when I sleep at night, what things I've been thinking about during the day comes up, I have a dream. A dream. There are dreams that come during the day. My eyes are open. My mind is alert. My heart is awake. And I read about this man. I read about this woman. I read about that young fellow. And I see what their lives achieve. And without sleeping, with my mind, my heart, my spirit, my spirit awake. I have a dream. I have a desire. I have a pull. I have beckoning, beckoning me to come along what these people have heard about, have read about. I have a dream. Another dream comes. I just read. I'm reading the Bible. And I see the glories of heaven. And I see the torments of hell. I see the duration of heaven eternal. I see the duration on earth. And I say this is short. Whatever I get here, 70 years, 80 years, 100 years, this one will end. And I reach that the people who had made something great here on earth, they go to the other side after death. And I see where they get to. And then I see the people that have gone to the right side in eternity. And I see the joy. I see the blessedness. I see the bliss. I see the companionship. I see the enjoyment they get in heaven. Now I have a dream that I want to be on the right side when I get over there in eternity. And I say, whatever I have here, 70 years, 80 years, a hundred years compared with a thousand years in heaven. Compared with ten thousand, a hundred thousand, a billion years in heaven. Compared with forever and ever and ever. I have a dream. I have a desire. I have a push. I have a drive that I want to get there. That's another kind of dream. Dream in the night, dream in the day, dream for eternity. And Joseph said, I pray you, listen, hear the dream which I have. And the dream determined is conviction. If you have a true dream, Really, really, if you have a dream, a desire, a purpose, a plan, that this is your dream, your convictions are built on the basis of your dream. And they hated him for his dream. Hatred did not change the dream of the dreamer. If you really have a dream, if you really have a desire, if you're looking at that and you're seeing what others cannot see, that determines your conviction. He had a dream and he hated him for it. And the Lord deepened the dream, broadened the dream, heightened the dream and showed him again. And he told them, you think it will now succumb. It will now step aside because they hated him for the dream. The dream makes you to survive every hatred, every opposition. All you need to have, have a dream.
They were in the, in the farm. They were watching over their father's flock. And the father said, go and show yourself to them and see how they do. And he went. He was not afraid. A dreamer is not afraid of the people that may not totally agree with his dream. I have it, this dream, and daddy, mommy cannot see through the dream. My brothers cannot see the dream. My co-workers cannot see through the dream, dream that I will get there. And uh, you don't shy away from them. The dream says you are going to rule over them. The dream says you are going to be the ruler and the king and the emperor, or the, you are going to be uh, the, the leader over them. And then you shy away because of their hatred. No, you don't do that. Dreamers don't run away from challenges. They do not run away from the people who think they have the power to kill the dream. And to kill the dream. And then he was getting to them. When he was about getting to them. He said here comes the dreamer. They had forgotten his real name. At least they will not pronounce it. Now they call him the dreamer. And I call you the dreamer. Yeah. I said I call you the dreamer. Yeah. When your dream takes possession of you. When your dream so impregnates you that all we can see yes we know your name but we rather call you by the dream you have that dream is before your eyes that dream is in your heart that dream is in your action that dream is all over you let's kill the dreamer and see what will become of his dream. So he got there and he caught him. They said, okay, don't kill him. The hearts of kings and the hands of the Lord. He turns each with us so ever he wants. If God gives you a dream and the powers that be, they say, will kill him and see what will become of his dream. You can kill somebody who doesn't have any dream from God. You cannot kill the dreamer having a dream from God. You need to say amen to that one. You're a dreamer and a dream comes from God. Nobody will kill you until your dream is fulfilled. And so they took him and he put him in a pit that's temporary. There are pitfalls, there are pits created and made by men or women. It's temporary. Whatever you are going through, you're not going to stay in that pit. That pit is a milestone on your way to the palace. I said that pit is just a mile post towards the palace. You will not stay there. And then some people were coming and they saw them. Oh, they changed their mind. No, they didn't change their mind. God changed their mind. I said God changed their mind. The Lord will change the mind of your enemies. The people that want to kill the dream, kill the dreamer, the Lord will change their mind. So they brought him out and they sold him. They sold him. They sold him. He is going to eventually become the seller of food to all of Egypt and all the nations around. But they thought they sold him. To slavery, but the Lord will reverse all of that. Amen. And so he came to Egypt and they sold him again to a businessman, a popular man. His name Potiphar. 
And he stayed there. Whatsoever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might, with all your strength, with all the wisdom you have. You know, uh, Joseph, the dreamer, everything that, for, that happened in the past, he forgot. It took me, they uprooted me from my father's house, he forgot. My own brother sold me into slavery, he forgot. If you're always thinking they injured me, I went through this, I went through that, all that will cloud your view, all that will suppress your mind, all that will replace the dream that you have. But the man, this young man, he said, what he did, I have forgotten. How they spoke, I have forgotten. I'm not thinking of yesterday. I'm not thinking of what happened in the past. I'm thinking of my dream. And God is watching over my dream. And then, uh, while he was there, Potiphar's wife looked at him and said, Young man, can I give you something? <laughs> What's that? The pleasure of the world. Ah, I said, no. God is watching me and watching over my dream. If I do that, I will lose the presence, the partnership, and the power of God. I cannot, I will not do that. And so, it's conviction on the dream. I'm fulfilling the dream. That conviction made him to say no to the temptress and to the temptation. Because the dream guided his life. And he wasn't remembering and forgetting, remembering and forgetting. You remember your dream every time. And when temptation comes, the tempter comes, the temptress comes, you'll be able to say, you wait, if I yield to this and I lose my dream or I reject this and keep my dream, that is what makes a dreamer the one that wants to stand out. He wants to stand up. He wants to stand right and stand straight. He wants to stand against anything and everything that will derail him. He wants to stand firm. He wants to stand fast. He wants to stand forever. It's the dream that creates that conviction and it's that conviction that makes him to move on and on. And when the temptress saw that she couldn't make Joseph, to forget his dream. He told a big lie. <laughs> that, that, that's what discourages some. Um, I see, you know, a young girl, a young lady in teenage years. I didn't do that. I, I couldn't have done that. I'm a child of God. I am a dreamer. I want to get the Let's say, shut up. You did it. And then they cast Joseph into the prison. Can you find a young man having a dream, always happy and hilarious? I mean, Potiphar's house, happy and hilarious. And then he gets to the prison, and you don't find, you know, looking back, thinking back, what he said, what he did, and how they're treating me. Make them sorrowful. You are happy all the time. You are not happy because of the circumstance. You are not happy because of the situation. But you are happy that God is still with you. I say God is still with you. And so when the keeper of the prison saw him happy, hilarious, joyful, and still having his mind, Still standing straight, still standing firm, still doing his duty as if nothing negative ever happened. You know why we share our duty? You know why we uh, kind of renege and was I won't do that anymore? What's the use? I did that good thing, I did that good thing. Look at what they have done to me. That's why I was stop. But Joseph, he will not stop. He wasn't looking at you know the water that went under the bridge, the comments against him or whatever. 
he stood you will stand I will stand and so in that prison he had two officers of the king of Pharaoh they had dreams in the night one it was going to be gotten rid of. The other one was going to be promoted. But he didn't know the meaning of the dream. And so they were sad. And he woke up in the morning and he looked at their faces. You know, if you're going to do good, you're not going to keep looking down all your life. You're not going to be looking down in misery, dejection. Look at what they did to me. I am rejected from my father's house. I'm rejected from my brethren. I'm rejected from Potiphar. No, 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 no. For Joseph, he looked up. You will look up. And he looked up with cheerfulness. And he looked up as somebody they could talk to. He was not carrying his problems on his face. He was not carrying the challenges of life he had on his person. No, all those things will not affect your facial appearance. You are still smiling. You are still happy. And he said, what's happening to you? You are sad. If anybody should be sad here, I should be sad. But... In sadness, I know how to turn my sadness to gladness. You will turn your sadness to gladness. Yeah. And so they said, we're dreams. Oh, he said, come, come, tell me the dream. God, the interpreter of the dream, is still with me. And so they told him the dream. And oh, he said, for you, this is the interpretation. For you, this is the interpretation. And the interpretation was fulfilled. Well, say, he succeeded in his interpretation because his interpretation came from revelation and inspiration. In your life, if you go through life in partnership with the revelation of God, who knows all things, who can solve every problem, every riddle, he can give us the solution. And you have the inspiration. Your life has not gone into the drain, into darkness, that you will not have inspiration. And if you this, the dream, the dreams were fulfilled, as he said. But he told the man, Remember me when it's good for you. When you get back to Pharaoh, you see here, I've not done anything wrong. And he put this on me. Remember me. And the man got back. And the fellow was so happy with what is God. He forgot Joseph. A thousand men, a thousand women may forget you, but God will remember you. I am remembered. I am remembered. Now, dream, dream, dream. Do you notice something here? Joseph had a dream. He knew the interpretation. The people in the prison, they had a dream. He had the, he had the interpretation. And now Pharaoh had a dream. It's like God had given a special gift, a special talent to Joseph. Other people had other abilities, other talents, other gifts, but Joseph had this special gift. The father did not really have deep gifts like that. It, also, it did not grow in the family. The brothers, yet you understood, superficially, you will rule over us. Is that what you are saying? But did it have the special gift spiritual that Joseph had? It's the gift you have that will lead you to being the highest and you will stand out in life in Jesus' name. My young age, you are already building houses with sand. 
think about that. The Lord has given you a gift. You'll be a constructor. You'll be a builder. I mean, like what you like to do. You see anything uh, the table. Look at that table clock and the hands are moving and it's doing tick, tick, tick. And when your, maybe your father, your mother is not there, you want to dismantle that thing. You want to know what is happening in there. And then little by little, as soon as you were, you know how to dismantle that thing. And then putting it back, you had difficulty at the beginning putting it back, but eventually you put it back. Doesn't that tell you something? Even before you went to any engineering class, you were already demonstrating that gift. Why don't you follow through on that? As you are young, if you saw anybody sick in any way, it shows on your face you have sympathy for them. And if you could do anything you like to raise them up from that bed of affliction, and then as you go through life, you, you always have this pity, and you always have this compassion and mercy. Doesn't show you that show you something? You're on the line of doctors and nurses and health helpers. In life, we look at ourselves. If you like to count anything they give you, you say one, two, three, four. And if they ask you the following day, how many things did we give you yesterday? One, two, three, four. If you like to add things together, even things that were not similar, you add this plus this, you get a kind of result. Does that show you anything at all? You hear them speaking over the radio, and you are there, you are listening, you are looking at the side of the at the side of radio. Who is talking there? It fascinates you. Does that tell you something about communication in life? As Joseph had that leaning and he was leaning towards that, the dream that is the gift that brought him to the top. The gift that will take you to the top is already inside you. Find it out. Explore it. Expand it. Apply what you have. Go to school and then see that this is the direction you ought to go. Sometimes, appearance, good, wonderful parents. They're thinking of being a doctor, being a lawyer, being an engineer. And you say, come, you must be an engineer. But... Your gift, your talent is in the sight of being a lawyer. No, no, you cannot be a lawyer. I, your father, with your mother, I say you must be an engineer. And yet your heart, the gift, the desire, the liking, and the leaning is on the side of being a lot. That's your gift. You will know, you might go for what is said you should go for. Then after you finish that, you go for your second degree, it will be what in your heart the Lord has put there already. And you will succeed. I will succeed. And so, Pharaoh had his own dreams, two of them. And the fellow should have remembered him, remembered him at the right time. And when Pharaoh told his dream, nobody could interpret. Only one man in the land that's standing out, that's standing straight, that's standing firm, that's standing fast, that's standing forever. We now talk about him. And he called Joseph. And Joseph changed his dress. Changed his appearance. Now there are people that do not understand. Our appearance. Our dressing. Gives us out 
as if we know what to do. You are going for an interview. And the panel is sitting. They have not heard you. They have not heard what you have mastered. They have not heard your special gift and your special achievement. What they can see first is your appearance. It's your dressing. And the first impression matters. They already have an impression of you as you came in if you're dressed in a lousy way. If you're dressed as if you're not going for an interview and uh, they look at you, they're already they give you the mark that you have failed already. Whatever you say, that has colored their understanding. But if you're dressed right and you walk right and you walk with courage in the midst of them, you have a good attitude. You never met them before you respect them the way they understand the respect and you sit down and you sit down not sloppy you sit down with your shoulders squared and your back straightening they say this is the kind of man we're looking for then and they give you some you know literal interview and they say come you're welcome Amen. you're past that interview Amen. you prepared yourself so Joseph shaped himself. He appeared before Pharaoh and he told the dream. All the time he was telling the dream, Joseph was cool and calm. You can tell, you can tell when you see a person who accomplishes, a person who is having conviction, a person that will get to the top. And when he finished, Joseph said, oh, interpretation belongs to God. As he opened his mouth, interpretation came forth. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. You'll fill your mouth with wisdom, with revelation. You'll fill your mouth with the answer we're looking for. And when he finished, Pharaoh said, can we find such a one as this? That's a man standing out. His attitude stood out. His life stood out. In the subject, academics, he stood out. In the character, in his life, he stood out. Every step of the way, he stood out. In the emotion, calm. And cool, he stood out in the confidence that he demonstrated before Pharaoh. He stood out. That's what the Lord is looking for. And how did he have that ability to stand out? It says, and the Lord is God was with him. The Lord is God was with him. Him. You give your life to the Lord, you are born again. And the Lord says, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. And that forms the foundation of your conviction. And you say, here is where I stand. The Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord increase you. Amen. And the Lord make you fit to the chair, to the seat, he purpose for you from all eternity. Amen. Hatred will not blow you up. Amen. Contradiction will not blow you up. Amen. And the harm that people try to do will not blow you up. You'll be a person with purposeful decision to stand with conviction. Let somebody say amen. amen. I come to number two now. Number two is the persevering devotion to stand afar from corruption. Welcome to Ruth. And in Ruth, we're looking at chapter 1, verse 16. Ruth. Here is a lady now. We spoke about a man. Now we're speaking about. A leader, a, a, a sister. And even though you're a sister, a daughter, you will stand out. Amen. Amen. 
Ruth chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. And then say, my, thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Hold on there. The Moab, that's the country where Ruth was born. And Ruth had, Ruth had her roots in Moab. It was a place of corruption. The corruption had been from ages past until that time. But Ruth decided I will stand afar from the corruption of the land. Eventually, she and Opa got married to the family of Naomi, or the husband. The husband died. The other woman's husband died. And the husband of Naomi died. When you have situations where the breadwinner is gone, the man, the love of your heart is gone. And Ruth became a widow at young age. That is enough to make a person go the way of corruption. How do I live? How do I survive? Husband gone. No child. And she was just there. Maybe if I go back to Moab, at least there are people who might still see I'm still beautiful enough to get married to. No, no. She had known the God of Israel, God of Abraham, and God of Jacob, and the God of Isaac. He had known him and said, I will go with you. I'll be a stranger there. No problem. I will go there. And when she eventually went with Naomi, she saw other people in Israel. Not all of them were straight. Not all of them were standing for the truth and righteousness. He didn't join them. There are many ladies around and ladies of different colors and different characters and different behavior. And Ruth said, no, I'm not caught out to be like them. Eventually, the mother said, now, are we going to die of hunger here? Why don't you go out and do something? And Ruth didn't say, and so I'd walk here again, ready to walk. A lady that says, look at, my, look at me now, father, no more, mother, no more, husband, not yet, children, not yet, and yet, you are able to walk with your hand. All the other ladies you know around, they are on the street, they are the street corner, they are for this, they are for that, so that so men, whatever the men want to deal with, them can do and get money and survive. But Ruth said, no, it will not be like that. That you stand against the corruption in society. Those are the people God will promote. The Lord will promote you. Yeah. And then she went and God directed her path to the field of Boaz. And when Boaz came around, he greeted all the workers and he said, Peace be unto you, God bless you. And he replied, God bless you, peace be unto you. And she, he saw Ruth there, well dressed, not tempting anybody with her dressing, 
well at good comportment, not inviting anybody. Ah, you people, you are all men. Are you not looking at my side? What are you looking for? As you, as you see me, don't you know I need one of you? Nothing like that. Your help will come from God. Husband will be appointed by God. And you don't have to do anything. See me and see my condition. And so Boaz saw her, and Boaz said in chapter 2, Blessed art thou. You have led your country, the country of corruption, and you have come here to trust in the God that you didn't know, and you have been good to your mother-in-law. The Lord bless you. I come to tell you, the Lord bless you. Yeah. The Lord lift you up. Yeah. And then, uh, the following chapter, Ruth went again. And as Ruth went, and Moab, uh, sorry, Boaz now spoke to her directly and said, Fear not. All that request I will fulfill because I have heard of you. You follow neither the rich nor the poor. You follow neither the rich nor the poor. That a lady that will just walk straight, standing out. A lady that will stand straight. A lady that will stand right. A lady that will stand against the corruption of the land. A lady that will stand Farm. A lady that will stand fast and stand forever might be standing there. Husband has not come and it looks like, is this going to be forever? She's standing there and pregnancy has not come like she's standing forever. She's standing there and she keeps her integrity and she keeps her mind, the mind that is focused on get into where I get to by conviction. And eventually, Osman came. You didn't say amen. amen. Osman will come. Amen. Not out of the refrats of society, the best that God can provide will come for you. Amen. Success came and she had Everything she actually became an ancestress of Jesus Christ. What God has planned, eyes have not seen, ears have not had, has not entered into the heart of anyone. When Ruth was coming from Moab, that never entered her heart. When Naomi said, Okay, you've made up your mind, let us go. That did not enter into the heart of Naomi. What God has prepared for you. Where are you? I said, what God has prepared for you. What God has prepared for you. That today has not entered your mind. You have not seen. You have not heard. But God is working for you. Yeah. Working on your behalf. You keep that conviction. And there's no corruption by the grace of God. The Lord will get you there. Yeah. I'm praying, this for myself now, I'm praying for longer life. Yeah. Because the life is long already. Yeah. But somebody help me shout longer. Yeah. Why am I praying for longer life? I want to see you get up there before i leave this world i want to see you achieve accomplish successful get him there and then at that time as i live longer and longer and longer already i see some marvelous things here today you know, when I was at the university, I tried, I try, you know, apart from the mathematics, I tried music just on the line, and I had a violin, and I was, you know, trying. And then, 
I add, for years, I add the keyboard. And every day, I'll play. And then, I'll try my violin. I want to tell you, the young man I saw here today, playing a violin, he has gone far beyond me. And the people I saw, those young men I saw, and their hands on the keyboard, I said, wow, this one has gone beyond me. I've not concluded, all of you, one by one. In your profession, in the work of your hand, in your accomplishment, you will go beyond me. So I'll come back, not to preach, I'll come back to see you perform. Yeah. As they put a young man on that pulpit there, and let me hear original message. Yeah. And you're welcome. You'll be a pastor. I'm serious, I'm serious. You'll be a pastor. You'll go beyond me. Yeah. You know, I, I see... Uh, that uh, young lady, I was just looking like this, you know, talking about disappointment is his appointment. And he said, change that D and change it to S. You have his appointment. I wrote the book, the booklet, and I see it summarized like that. And I asked myself, can I come up? Even though I wrote the book and gave the summary like that. And God said, that's what I'm telling you. You are raising of people who will go farther than you go. Don't give up. You will go farther. Don't sit down. You will go farther. And I pray that this youth impact will never stop. And so we continue to bring up and bring out the young people that will stand out. And everybody in the world will see your face. Amen. And see the talent that God is bringing up. And the corruption in the land will never get to you. I come to point number three now. Point number three, we're looking at the perpetual dominion, standing fast with courage. Perpetual dominion. I'm thinking of Daniel. Daniel came at the age of 17, 18. He lived beyond 90 years of age. And all through 18 to 88, seven years, and 90, 70 years, 72, and more. That man lived in Babylon, and he lived a life that went beyond whatever Babylon had ever known. Why? Because he had perpetual dominion, standing fast with courage. In Daniel chapter 1, reading from verse 8, it says, and Daniel but Daniel purposed in his heart. Isn't that where courage begins? Why? Where vision begins? Where accomplishment begins where stamina strong backbone isn't that where it begins when i purpose in my heart and my heart is where no man can reach except i permit them negative word when negative word can reach except i permit them where assault, insult, or whatever hindrance or discouragement can reach, except I permit it. You guard, you keep your heart 
with all diligence a kind of put down conversation is going on you fence your heart you keep your heart you protect your heart a kind of negative utterance is going on we cannot our people cannot no person here cannot that's negative you shield your mind and the people who are coming back from the journey they, they set out to go there to climb the mountain to cross the river and to achieve what appears unachievable they're coming back and they feel sorry they say they wasted their lives chasing what they referred not now to now as shadows and mirage of life and you don't allow the disposition the discussion their attitude the failure syndrome you don't allow that to get into your heart and your purpose in your heart and Daniel was not going here and there what do you think I should do they're serving the wine of the king I think it's not good for me I think I should not stay in my life, my heart, my character was what the offer. What do you think? No, Daniel did not go for consultation. If I know the answer to the problem, why am I looking for other answers? If I know the solution, and if I can take the firm decision and determination to carry out what I know is right, why am I going out and going around? What do you think? I want to take a stand. What do you think? I want to stand out. I want to stand straight. I want to stand right. I want to stand against corruption. I want to stand for what is right. I want to stand firm. I want to stand fast. I want to stand forever. I already know what I ought to stand for. Why am I looking for opinions of people who have not made it? He purposed in his own heart your purpose in your heart yeah. and when you make up your mind you'll not fall for opinion say opinion there and it's a daniel purpose in his heart that he would not defile himself that he would not defile himself you know what that means the people don't think okay wine I will not defile myself. That's not the only thing that defiles a man. A man who is strong at heart. A man who is standing firm. A man who says, this is the way I will go. And this is the direction I will go in life. Opinions can come and defile that heart, that mind. And once your heart is defiled by contrary opinions then you're shattered you're broken you're down because now you won't have the courage to rise up and do what you need to do when failures failures of a man failures of a woman and they you know they narrate their stories to you and they say i used to be as strong as you are strong i used to be as determined as you are determined but young man can i tell you i even expended all my energy and all my money and i said this is what i will do but you know now I've learned that being a man, a woman that will stand out, that in this society, it does not work. That idea, that kind of a failure mentality that that fellow has said to you, if you accept that in your heart, it defiles your heart. It diminishes your strength. You say, he cannot, I cannot, but I can I said, I can. When you watch over the television, when you hear over the radio, and their communication is, uh, maybe they're in a debate, maybe they're in, a, you know, whatever communication, and they say this, and they say this, okay, what's the conclusion? The conclusion is the world and our country has gone so bad.
that nobody can turn any scene around if you listen to their argument and you say look at that this one uh they're adult people they've seen this they've seen that they've come to the conclusion nobody and nobody can make it and make the country turn in the right direction if you accept that in your heart that defiles your heart that deforms your personality if you uh, you know you are listening to people they say how old are you now i'm 43 and this has not happened that has not happened that has not happened if full at 40 tell me talk now when you accept that when you accept that a fool at 40 is a fool forever your heart is defiled you'll not even make any attempt i'm 43 i cannot get married anymore i'm 43 i cannot have child anymore i'm 43 i cannot start a new lesson a new study anymore i'm 43 and where i am now forever in jesus name i cancel that from your life I'm going to say something. Mommy Esther will not mind what I say. Mommy, will you mind? No, sir. no, no. She has answered me. Now, she was 40. She was not married. 45. She was not married. 50. She was not married. 60. She was not married. 65. I came along and I said, the will of God is for me to marry you. She went to pray, God, what will I do? God did not say, tell him no. Tell him you are 65. And a fool at 40, at 50, at 60 is a fool forever. She came back and she said, what did she say? Yes. She said, yes. In your life, in your life. At 30, say yes. At 40, say yes. At 50. Yes. At 60. Yes. At 65. And see, she said yes, and we came together. I, what's my name? I, William, the defender of the faith. I have become the greatest sinner that ever happened in her life. Don't give up, don't give up purpose in your heart you will not de you will not defile yourself with all the things that people are saying you will get up again Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego um, Nebuchadnezzar said hey you don't bow down I will throw you into the furnace of fire and everything will finish in your life and they said go ahead and do whatever you want to do and he threw them into the fire in the fire they stood up they stood out you know it doesn't matter furnace or fire or problem we will stand up yeah. and Nebuchadnezzar came to look and said did we not throw three men into that furnace I see four men. The Son of God came from heaven and is walking with them in the fire. As you make up your mind today and you say, I am for Christ, I am with Christ, and Christ is in me, you will walk in your fire. And you will get to the place you need to get to in Jesus' name. They said Daniel could not be faulted about anything. And so they said anybody that prays to God will be cast into the den of lions. Now, 
Daniel knew about that enemy. But this is a man. That the furnace of fire, the den of lions, will not change his mind. Nothing negative will change your mind. Their proposals will not change your mind. Their fire, their lions, will not change your mind. And so Daniel continued to pray as he used to pray because he knew that the prayer that brought him where he was and his prayer that will take him higher. Where to, they said, we have seen him. We have seen him. They caught him. And he told the king, this is the edict that cannot change. And so they threw him into the den of lions. Even lions will respect a man that has conviction, that has courage. All through the night, the lions who are jostling for position, let him lie on me as the mattress. And then he was there and he had good night's sleep in the lions then. No worry, no worry in your heart. No anxiety, no anxiety in your life. And the lions of the day will not make you quit your position. And the king came in the morning and said, Oh Daniel, it's your God whom you serve day and night, able to deliver you from those lions. And Daniel spoke back. His voice was bright. His voice was clear. His voice was confident. He said, Live forever, O King, my God has sent his angels. And he has closed the mouth of the lion that they could not hurt me. They could not hurt you. They didn't eat you up. No. Come on, let me see. And then he came out. It was, it was like when he entered, he now had even greater faith and greater confidence. He said, now I know wherever they drop me, the dream will be fulfilled before I leave this place. The courage will work in spite of the lions and I will make it. In conclusion, I've come to tell you that the grace, the strength, the inner energy to stand out, God has given you. Yeah. And God will give you more. Yeah. More. Yeah. More. Yeah. Forget the past. Look at Christ in the present and in the future. No. That he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Are you there? Or are you? You will stand out. But you are sitting down. You will stand out. You will stand right. All the corruption around will not touch your life. You will stand straight, stand right. You will stand against corruption anywhere you are, anywhere you detect corruption. Amen. Amen. You will stand firm. You're not being like jellyfish, you know, one leg in the sea and one leg on the land. And you sometimes you are bending this, sometimes you are bending that way. You will stand firm. Winds will blow. Waves will come. But you will stand firm. You'll stand fast. You'll stand fast. You'll be like that rock that nothing on earth will move. And you will stand, stand perpetually and stand forever. Now, as I leave Delta, I have the confidence in my heart I'm leaving multitudes behind in every office, in every school, in every college, in every department. I'm now standing with confidence that here in Delta State, I have people 
Look at him there. Look at her there. Look at her there. You'll be standing out everywhere you are in Jesus' name. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Invite Christ into your heart. Let him come today. Let him come to stay. And let him make you a man, a woman, a lady, a young man, gentleman, a teenager, that you stand out everywhere you go. Open your mouth and pray to God, the God of heaven. Lord, here am I. Help me stand out, stand right, stand straight, stand against every corruption, stand firm, stand fast. Stand. Invite Christ, He'll make you stand, help you to stand, give you the power to stand, cleanse every corruption out of your life, and then He gives you conviction, firm conviction. Believe. It's done. Your life, your heart, is done. Stop fearing what you feared in the past. Stop running here and there because of those who hate your standing. Stay there. You rule over them. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. The Lord has answered your prayer. Yeah. Every hindrance is taken out of your way. Yeah. All doubt, solemn belief, all fear taken away from your life. Yeah. And the land where God has established you, you will stand out. I will stand out. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over here, make every past failure a present success. All the people that have been grounded, they're trying to give in, and they're giving up, Lord, raise them up with conviction with courage, with confidence that from today, my young brother there, my young sister, their son, daughter, now the inner energy has now come. Yeah. You are meant, you are designed to stand out, you will stand out. Yeah. And the decision you have made, the determination that God has given you, the devotion, that you have already to stand and stand out, the Lord confirm it in Jesus' name. The kind of confidence you never had, receive that confidence right now. The kind of courage you've never had, receive that courage right now. The unfading, undying, unbendable conviction you never had receive that conviction right now the strength of the lord go with you the power of the lord go with you and the anointing that breaks every yoke come upon your life every yoke in your life is broken your sicknesses are healed and all the discouragement everything taken away in every part of your body the healing virtue of the lord go from the top of your head to the tip of your toe yeah. every hindrance cancelled yeah. now go in the strength of the lord and go everywhere and stand out yeah. through you 
the Lord will turn our community, our state, our nation, and the nations of the world will turn the nations of the world right side up in Jesus' name. Yeah. I can. I will. I must. The Lord go with you in all his fullness. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah.